COVID-19, Racial Justice and the Virtual Learning Experiences of Black Youth, presented by Columbia School of Social Work and Dr. Sharetta T. Butler Barnes. My name is Kristen Craig and I attended COVID-19, Racial Justice and the Virtual Learning Experience as a Black Youth, presented by Dr. Sharetta T. Butler on behalf of Columbia School of Social Work as part of the 2021 Alice P. Lynn Memorial Lectures. I chose this event because it is significant to understand how underserved minority youth groups are dealing with the stresses of the pandemic while also enduring racism both at home and in the media and attending school online in the midst of all of this. I was looking to expand my understanding when working with Black youth during a time where Black Lives Matter and the pandemic intersect and are so prevalent. I believe that with privilege, we do not think about how the racial unrest and pandemic have gone hand in hand to affect the mental health of Black youth. I have youth attending school myself virtually, but our one obstacle is that we don't have to think about what black youth in their underserved communities are facing. The population of focus is black youth who differ from my very own identity as they are of a different race, social class, developmental stage, and have a different knowledge of privilege than myself. To give you a brief overview of the content of this presentation, this presentation will discuss the effects of racial injustice and COVID-19 on Black Americans in the United States, specifically Black youth in underserved communities. Challenges, problem solving, strategies, and solutions are addressed, and the proposal of strength-based best practices most appropriate for working with Black youth. The event I attended was held online via Zoom so that the attendees and speakers could attend while socially distancing. The speaker, Dr. Butler Barnes, discussed her research on the effects of the pandemic, racial unrest, and virtual education on Black youth. She is a developmental psychologist and quantitative methodologist who focuses her research on the challenges to Black youth, specifically Black adolescent girls and how they thrive using their resources and individual cultural assets while facing cultural individual racism. During the lecture, I had a significant realization that I was much more unaware of the barriers that Black youth have been facing during the pandemic in conjunction with the current spotlight on racism and violence against Black Americans. I found myself shaking my head while listening intently to the speaker talk about these effects that the events have had on their educational experience and their mental health as well. Dr. Butler Barnes shared the statistic that Black Americans are much more likely to die, making up 15% of COVID deaths, said to be caused by a combination of crisis and grief because it amplifies their existing health conditions and stress from all of the educational barriers that they're facing as well. Culture among Black Americans strength is deeply rooted in socialization within the communities, kinship, spirituality, and family relationships. These are strengths that can absolutely be significant factors when working with Black youth in America. Research revealed that school connection provided hopefulness for them, problem solving, and help seeking among the Black youth participants. Black youth development is focused on their social positioning. While they're in the process of growing up, they're having to figure out what they can achieve while also having to find their own identity. Because Black youth have been invisible in terms of a significant group to focus on during the pandemic, 
it's made it much more difficult on them, causing a significant amount of mental health problems. Black youth worldviews are formed by their various social identities. Dr. Butler Barnes' research uncovered that racial discrimination was as high as five occurrences per day, virtually. This including hearing racist comments being made to others by others. It was also found that increased online experiences of racism were directly linked to an increase in high activism, high risk activism for boys, although girls were less likely in general to participate in high risk activism. Also influential were peer and school supports. The higher level of support, the less likely they were to participate in high risk activism. Now, the zero tolerance policy may be one of the most significant policies affecting black youth today. The policy was staged to portray a safe environment for youth in the education system. What the policy actually did was target minority students, namely the black youth. Heitzig in 2009 argued that this policy, among others, are racially disproportionate, increasing legal issues, elevating dropout rates due to the high number of suspensions and expulsions. Minor infractions lead to arrests by police in the schools and send the youth, youth spiraling through the criminal justice system. Youth of color in particular are at increased risk for being pushed out of the schools, pushed out into the streets, and into the juvenile justice system and or into adult prisons and jails. Thus, the school to the prison pipeline theory. School funding has made a switch from improving schools to vamping police presence with the funding instead. Black males are already at a disadvantage statistically, as they have a graduation rate far lower than white women, white men, and black women. Once they enter the juvenile justice system, they're very unlikely to return to school and pursue a degree. And obtaining employing and housing is difficult as an adult, especially with a criminal record and will likely lead to a life in and out of the prison system. I've included a quote by Marian Anderson that I think speaks for all areas of social work in regards to oppression and racism that we experience today. The quote reads, no matter how big a nation is, it is no stronger than its weakest people, and as long as you keep a person down, some part of you has to be down there to hold him down. So it means you cannot soar as you might otherwise. When we think about this, it speaks for how we need to be change agents and advocate for better policies for the oppressed. Now reflecting back on my thoughts and feelings after the lecture, I felt that there are so many intersecting issues affecting black youth that I never gave thought to. The pandemic, although difficult for everyone, had a significant impact on black Americans who statistically already endure more poverty and health struggles than white Americans, resulting in increased problems when virtual schooling, outcrying for an end to racism, and the pandemic all combined. The issue of the youth experiencing racism online during school and the connection to increased high-risk activism and how the nation is so unaware of the impact of these intersecting issues. Social workers can increase their awareness and become change agents for Black youth. Advocacy for change in policies that no longer target minorities or push them out of the schools and into the prison systems. Research has shown that youth having support within the schools dramatically improve their outcomes and the resiliency related to the multiple barriers that they are currently facing. So the answer would be an increased presence of social workers within the school to help correct that problem. Research also showed that peer-to-peer -peer relationships and open dialogue in the schools regarding systemic racism and the oppression they are dealing with also improved outcomes. Time needs to be made for open dialogue in the classrooms to discuss what they are going through with their peers and their leaders to help them feel like they're not alone. 
in order to be a change agent myself, working with the underserved population of foster children, I would advocate for groups that allow children to openly discuss their feelings and relate to others that are in similar situations. Black youth are a large percentage of the foster care system and providing them that needed support could change their paths and their paths are not statistically promising. I would also advocate for access to healthcare and technology that is necessary for them to succeed. I included one more quote that I liked um, by James Baldwin. It was not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed until it is faced.